In this video, we're going to consider the output of a linear system that's being driven by a sinusoidal input. And in particular, we're going to be looking at the steady state response to it. So we've got this circuit, this system, that's specified by its transfer function being driven by a time input of V sub m cosine omega t plus v. The Laplace transform of the input is V sub m s cosine of phi minus omega sine of phi divided by s squared plus omega squared. Using the transfer function, we can then specify the, the Laplace transform of the output function. It will be equal to V in the Laplace transform of the input times the transfer function. Now, for this case, our V out is going to equal the Laplace transform of our input function times H of S. Now, for this, we're going to make a, an assumption regarding H of S. Although it's unspecified, we're going to assume that it's stable, which means that the poles of H of S are all in the left half plane of the complex S, uh, of the complex uh, S plane. So given that, we can then have our V out of S is equal to this times H of S. And traditionally, the way we, re we determine V out of T is to inverse transform this expression by breaking it down into its partial fraction expansion. To do that, we're going to first factor this term here to an S minus J omega times S plus J omega. And we then have terms in the partial fraction expansion for each of those factors, k1 a constant over s minus j omega, plus k1 conjugate over s plus j omega. And then again, we're going to just lump all of the poles, or the terms associated with the poles of h of s, into this. Again, acknowledging that because h of s is stable, these terms are all going to die out in the steady state. So let's go ahead and evaluate k1 then. To do so, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by s minus j omega. And we'll do that on, again on both sides. So we'll have s minus j omega, s minus j omega. And then collectively, all these terms are going to be multiplied by s minus j omega also. And now we're going to evaluate both sides of the equation at s equals positive j omega. When we do so, evaluating this at s equals plus j omega, we get j omega minus j omega. This term just goes to zero. Similarly, all of these terms will go to zero. But because we multiplied by s minus j omega, the s minus j omega terms cancel. And on this side, we're left simply with k1. Now, on this side, we've got, when we evaluate it at s equals j omega, first of all, this term is going to cancel that term. And we're left then with v sub m times s, which is going to be j omega cosine of phi minus omega sine of phi divided by s equals j omega, so we're going to have 2j omega. And now we have h of s, which evaluated at s equals j omega is h of j omega is equal to our k1 term. Now, some simplification is possible. We see that we have an omega term in each of these three terms, which will cancel. We also have a j term here and a j term here. So this j term divides into both of them. When we do so, it cancels this j term. And here we end up with sine phi over j. If we bring that j into the numerator, we change the sine here from a minus to a plus, And we're left with v sub m divided by 2 times h of j omega times the cosine of phi plus j sine of phi is equal to k1. Using Euler's formula, we realize that this cosine of phi plus j sine phi 
is or can be rewritten as e to the j phi and we have then combining terms h of j omega v sub m over 2 e to the j phi is equal to k1 h of j omega is a complex function it has a magnitude which we'll call magnitude h of j omega and it also has a phase angle e to the j theta of omega so rewriting this in its polar form we have magnitude of h of j omega e to the j theta of j omega multiplied by v sub m over 2 e to the j phi is what our k1 equals combining the magnitude and the phase terms we have then v sub m over 2 times the magnitude of h of j omega e to the j multiplying with the two exponents the two exponential terms multiplied together we add the exponents gives us an e to the j phi plus theta of omega for our k1 so we have now k1 it consists of a magnitude of k1 magnitude of k1 which is equal to v sub m over 2 times the magnitude of h of j omega and there's an angle of k theta sub k there's an angle of k1 which is phi plus theta of omega at this point we can finally turn to a Laplace transform table where we find that this combination transforms back into the time domain with an amplitude of two times the magnitude of k1 so two times the magnitude of k1 the twos cancel and we're left with then v out of t is equal to two times the magnitude the twos cancel so we're left with v sub m magnitude of h of j omega times the cosine of omega times t plus the phase of k1 which in this case is phi plus theta of omega this is a remarkable result it deserves to be underlined and highlighted in some way what this is saying is that for an input with an amplitude of v sub m at a frequency omega with some some phase angle phi the output can be determined by taking the input the amplitude of the input and multiplying it by the magnitude of the transfer function at evaluated at omega times the cosine of omega t plus the phase angle of the input added to the phase angle of the transfer function in other words the output amplitude is just the input amplitude times the magnitude of the transfer function the frequencies as we know are going to be the same the frequency of the output is going to be the same as the frequency of the input and the phase of the output is going to equal the phase of the input plus the phase of the transfer function a most remarkable and a most convenient result